Hello all. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, based on from where you are seeing this. So today, while I was training some of the new bees in Business Central, somebody asked me a question. And I looked at my YouTube channel and found out that I don't have a video about it. So now let's think about it, that you are new or even you are experienced in NAV and you are starting your journey in Business Central. Or you are an experienced developer who still have a hard time finding the right event. Now, in the product, Microsoft have made possibilities to make event finding or discovering of the right event very easy in multiple ways. So in today's video, what we'll do is we'll see how you can do it from the client first. And then if you are a pro developer, you know what you're looking for, then how you can find those event at the end, we'll see how you can find those events from your VS code. So stay tuned if you don't know about it. If you know about it, I'll see you in another video. As we understand that the subscribing of these event to extend the application becomes very important for the extensions that you want to extend. <laughs> so like you might be looking for extending the base application or any other uh, application. For that, you need to know how to discover these events that you would like to subscribe to. Now for the similar thing, there can be multiple events available and we need to understand how we find out the right event. So first we'll see what is event recorder and how you can use event recorder in the client based on the scenario that you have. So let's get into it. So what do you have to do is you have to start your business central client, just this, let's say, and let's pick a very simple example. I have a requirement that when I create a sales order and uh, or a purchase order and as soon as I choose a customer or a vendor I also need to copy a value that I have added using extension on a customer table to my sales order record. Now from basic perspective I know to add a field on the customer table it's done by table extension and in the similar way on the purchase or on the sales header table. Now, how I move the value? Because something happens when I, and let's see that, when I create, let's say, a purchase order, and as soon as I do a new, and let's say I choose a vendor, there are so many values that get auto-populate. Now, in all that, whenever it is happening, I also want to populate one of the custom fields that I have. Now in this process, they surely need to have a knowledge of which event you need to subscribe. And you may not know it because you are new to the business center. So let's see what happens. What business center have provided to help you. Microsoft have provided to help you. So what you can do here is you can search for something called as event recorder. That populates a window. Now the best practice is to kind of move it out on a separate window like this. So this comes out on a separate window and then I'll zoom this out so that it's on a separate window. Okay, now at this point, I know when I want to find out the event. So when I click on new, I don't need to know what happening, what's happening right now. At this point, when I choose the vendor, I need to know what events are getting triggered so that I can choose the right event that I need. So what I'll do here is I come here, I pin this and I say start. Now remember exactly do it when you want to record the events. It just works like a recorder. So when I click start, it asks for a confirmation and started. Now as soon as I click on this and choose a vendor, it started recording every event that has been triggered in the code, either a Microsoft event or even if it's a third party event that's getting triggered in this place. And then once I'm done with it, I can click stop. Now it tells me that there are 385 events has been recorded. So that means on selection of vendor on a purchase order, there are 385 events that has been recorded or called during this process and you can click yes. 
Now, as soon as you click yes, it tells you all the events that has been triggered and there are certain options available here. Call order, what type of event it is. Is it a trigger event, which is associated with the table or is it a custom event, which means that there is an explicit definition of that event written in the code. How many times it has been called or hit, which object it belongs to, object type, what is the object name, what is the event name, uh, if there is an element, which means if it is associated with a field, then you will see the field name, calling object type, what is calling it, calling method, and then there is at the end, there is a get AL snippet. So now what I can do is I can short it based on call order and see what's being called at the first. So if you remember, we click on the vendor number lookup. So the first event that you see that's being triggered is vendor lookup on open page event. That means it populated the vendor page for my selection of the vendor that I want to choose. Then sixth time there is an event that is being called is on after get record event. Then there is a on before validate event on the byte from vendor number, which means that this event gets triggered before the validation of byte vendor number happens, which is exactly what I'm looking for because as soon as it gets validated, you will notice there is a on before validate, on after setup, there is a setup happening somewhere in each record and so on and so forth. And then following fields are being validated. Sell to customer number, location code. Every field validate is being called and in the same way these fields are being populated. Now hopefully till this point, and I'm assuming this, you know what you want. And once you know what you want, what you can do is, let's say I want this buy from end number. I can click on it to get AL snippet. And this will give me the event subscription detail, how you need to subscribe to this particular event. <coughs> Sorry. This will give me how I need to subscribe to this event, which is a signature of my event subscription. I can just copy this, come into my VS code, and I don't have a code in it, but let's create a code in it. Let's start L and let's create a code unit 50100 and in here I can go ahead and paste this. Now this generates the signature which helps me to identify how I need to define my event which is on the purchase at a table on before validate of my buy from vendor number. Now are there any other relevant event? There can be. And then based on this, you can choose which event works for you and then just use the get AL snippet to get that event. So let's quickly revisit what you did. On event recorder page, we said open it into a new window. Then on event recorder page, we choose record event and then choose start. In the original window, we perform all the action that you wanted to record. For example, uh, selecting a customer or event number, and then we stop the button, which re which generates a list of all the raised event in that process. Now remember that these recording event are not saved. So as soon as you cl close it or you start it again, it'll automatically disappear from this window. Now how this happens, all the recorded events are are displayed in the order that they were called and uh, the event recorder page provides you information on the event that were raised including the detail whether they are raised event or they are trigger or custom event. Trigger event are associated with the tables majorly. Okay now let's talk about the other thing or let's see because I get a lot of questions around oh what happens when we post something. So let's see that scenario also. So now I know the basic stuff, but I don't know, let's say this is what? This is India database. So let's pick a sales order, if we have one. Mm, okay. 
I'm not an expert on GST, but let's try me. Let me try adding some values here, which should set the GST here. Okay. So in the GST group code, and this is an Indian localization. I just want to see the GST values populated. As you can see, that's being populated. Now I'm shipping one quantity and you know watching one quantity. Now you can use the event recorder in a process like posting a document. So what I'm going to do now, first I'll see that are there any issues when I'm trying to post this. Okay. No, all looks good. What I can do again, as I did earlier, is I can open here event recorder. And as I open event recorder, I'll po uh, open it into a separate window. <coughs> Sorry. Once it is here, I can click on start. I'll start recording all the events. And then when I click on post, every single step that gets executed while posting a sales order all those events that gets triggered in that process will get recorded here so as i can see that the quantity has been shipped in invoice i can stop the process and i see that this time 1983 events has been recorded and surely we would like to display them so now you can see that there are quite a few events that gets uh, called and I can just short it based on the call order to see what was my first event. And here, if you look at it, it first checks, is there an approval uh, pending for this document? Then it checks some sales header, uh, sales order details, structure management, error helper if there is anything. Then it comes to your sales post and so on and so forth. So this can also help you to understand how a process flow works because based on the event recorder, it goes through different code segments which then gets triggered and the value gets passed between different documents as the process is happening okay now let's come to the last part of this video which is okay i know the basic stuff i know how things are but it's always hard to go to the purchase or header table i know that i'm looking for an event on the purchase header table but every time i don't want to go here uh, but go to definition then go to the end of it majorly and then find out the event that I'm looking for and then copy that and paste it. How Business Central VS Code can help me. What you can do is you can do a Control Shift P which opens up your search ribbon and you can do a find event. As you do AL find event, it populates all the events that you have into the system. Uh, in all the extension that you are dependent on. Now what you can do is, let's say you're looking at code unit 90, let's say for example, so you can say code unit, uh, perch, uh, I guess dot hyphen post, as I can see here, and it'll filter out all the events that are available in that particular code unit. So let's assume I want to see I want to subscribe to this event which is on after post of vendor ledger entry. I can just hit enter and it'll automatically copy that signature into this window, into the object that I'm in right now. Now you see a subtle difference in these two events. Uh, uh, this is because this is marked for removal and going away. Uh, nothing much over here. But you will notice that in the first window where we copied from the client, the last two parameter was set to true. Whereas when we copied from the VS code, it brought the last two parameter as false. Now there will always be a debate about how you do this, but here is how my take, it, take is. The first parameter we know is object type where the event resides. The second is object where this event reside okay that can be a code unit a page a table or something the event name if there is an element associated then the element name and the last two properties are skip on missing license and a skip on missing permission now if you set to these two to true that means the subscriber will not be triggered if the license does not have permission to execute uh, 
that <coughs> process or if your permission are missing to execute that code the system will just skip executing that event subscriber at that moment so from my perspective the last two values of last two options when you are doing an event subscription should be false and false unless you are building an app source app where you want to skip certain sections of code because user does not have the right permissions or they it is not part of the license for a pte development per an extension that we develop i feel like and if you feel differently let me know into the comments i think it should always be false in both the cases so now hopefully based on this you understand how you need to find the right event that you are looking for or if you are still learning business central how you can still be at a better space while you are looking for the events now as i said if there is a better suggestion than what i said in the video do let me know into the comments and suggestions or any other suggestions into the comment box at this point you know the drill hit the like button if you like the video do share it on social media with your friends so that other people can get benefit out of it and if you haven't please do subscribe to the channel it helps us to understand how we are doing are we making it, uh, an impact on the business central community or not so please do subscribe if you haven't and if you don't know yet i have started uh, uh, a new consulting firm called athate consulting in uh, india we are open for business so if you have anything that where we can assist you in any of your business central needs either the training upgrade implementation or support do let us know and we'll be happy to help you i'll see you sooner than later into the next video till then keep learning and keep sharing whatever you are learning thank you and have a nice day